Hello, future sharks. Welcome to our academic program guidance webinar, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Bao Gessel, and I represent the Graduate Admissions Department at Nova Southeastern University's College of Computing and Engineering, or the CCE for short. As a heads up, everyone will be muted during this presentation for the best sound quality. The purpose of this presentation is to go into more details about both our master's and doctoral programs and provide additional useful information and some tips for identifying the best graduate program for you. I'll go over our master's programs first and then follow with the doctoral programs. Also, just so you know, the order that I will be presenting the programs in each academic level is in alphabetical order. So there's a lot of information to share and I'll just go ahead and dive right in. We currently have seven Master of Science degree programs consisting of 10 courses and 30 credits each. So they are the Computer Science Program, Cybersecurity Management Program, the Data Analytics Program, Information Assurance in Cybersecurity, Information Systems, Information Technology, and Technology and Organizational Leadership. The MS programs are designed to be completed in one year. However, depending on the amount of coursework that you plan on taking per semester, and if you plan on being a full-time or part-time student, it could take on average between 12 to about 24 months to complete. We also have two graduate certificate programs consisting of four courses and 12 credits each. And on average, full-time students can earn the degree in three to six months. And then part-time students can earn the degree in about six to 12 months. Courses for both the MS and graduate certificate programs run for eight weeks and are available online, on campus, and or a combination of both. And on average, students take about two courses every eight weeks. Now I'm gonna go into the specifics of each of these programs. So for the Master of Science in Computer Science, this is our most technical program. It requires a very strong academic background in computer science core courses. And this program is for people who want to design and develop technologies. They build and model algorithms and apply it to real, real world problems. So a strong math and a theoretical computation is required. There are six concentrations to choose from. And for all of our master's programs that have concentrations, students are able to choose up to two concentrations. And just a few sample career paths are artificial intelligence engineer and software developer and also systems architect. Now, these are just a few sample career paths and it doesn't cover all that are you know, out there. It's just to give you an idea of the career path or goals that you might have. And also looking into these careers is also another good idea to find out if this is the right program for you meaning that if you find careers associated with a computer science degree to be appealing, then it's possible that this program is right for you. The program specific admission requirements, some of them for this program include a data structures and algorithms, computer architecture, calculus, and discrete mathematics. Now, if you are wondering whether or not you may qualify for our graduate degrees, I highly recommend for you to pay attention to these program specific admissions requirements that I'll be covering today for each degree program. They are aside from the general admissions requirements, which we have discussed in our previous webinars, which are also available in detail on our website. And these, these requirements, highlight the kind of base or background knowledge 
that the admissions committee looks for in a potential candidate. If an applicant does not necessarily have the adequate background, they may be required to take one or more prerequisite courses during the first semesters of the program. And I wanted to mention the only master's degree program that does not have a prerequisites is the data analytics program. So that one does not have a prereq. So I also want to note that prerequisites for this program in particular is meant to help bridge the gaps in an applicant's academic background, but are not meant to complete the bridge. They do fill in some of the holes that some applicants would have, but they cannot span the gap for every prospective student. And so there should be some academic foundation that the applicant possesses. So for our MS and graduate certificate programs for our cybersecurity management program, they are, this program is designed for people who want to select and maintain the technologies and develop policies and processes to ensure the security of an organization. So it's basically security in an organizational context. And there are no concentrations because it's solely focused on cybersecurity management. And the difference with a graduate certificate program is that the focus is on the fundamentals such as cybersecurity, systems operations, and security governance. And some of the career paths include um, chief information security officer and cyber policy and strategy planner. Now, keep in mind, the graduate may or may not necessarily end up in a position of policymaking or a leadership role. And the program specific admissions requirements include data structures, algorithms, and programming in a modern high level language. And for the prerequisite course, it would be the MSIT 501 Foundations of Programming, Data Structures, and Algorithms. As opposed to the computer science prerequisite course, courses, if you are admitted into this program, this prerequisite would actually help to bridge the gap entirely and a strong academic computing background is not necessarily needed. So for the MS and graduate certificate in data analytics, this program allows a graduate to go into different departments within a company or different industries to analyze data for ultimately decision making, such as you know, business and business education or medical, just to uh, give some examples. And this program focuses on the application of concepts and methods that are central to data analytics database management, data warehousing, data mining, data visualization, forecasting, and predictive modeling. And the difference with the graduate certificate program is that the focus is on the fundamentals, such as programming data structures and algorithms and data warehousing. And then some of the career opportunities is data scientist or operations analyst, analytics manager, and then the program specific admissions requirements. So this program is designed for those who have an undergraduate degree in or related to computer science, business, information systems, information technology, engineering, mathematics, um, and or physics. Now, it doesn't mean that if you don't have these specific degrees that you, know, you won't be able to be admitted into the program. Um, because a strong computer background, computing background is not necessarily required. And as I mentioned earlier, there are no prerequisites for this program. For the Master of Science in Information Insurance and Cybersecurity, this program is for people who are interested in a programming intensive curriculum like the computer science program. 
it's designed for people who want to design or program, enhance and develop technologies that secure information and systems. And some of the career opportunities include, you know, chief information security officer on um, cyber defense, infrastructure support specialist. And again, those are just some of the examples. The program specific admission requirements is data structures and algorithms, assembly language and archi computer architecture, computer architecture, and structured programming in a modern high level language and discrete mathematics. Okay, so there are four of them. And as you can see, there are the same prerequisites as the computer science program or the prerequisite courses. So here it's the MS501, Foundations of Programming, Data Structures and Algorithms, and the uh, CSIC 501, 502, and 503. And like the computer science program, the prerequisites for this program are meant to help bridge the gap in an, in an applicant's academic background, but are not meant to complete the bridge for every prospective student that does not have the adequate background. And the applicant is expected to have some academic foundation. And for the Master of Science in Information Systems, this program is for people who want to work in an organization and help it to advance by using technology. They are like technology organizers. Now they don't develop, but they are responsible for the design. And this program is more about managing systems. And the program focuses on understanding the flow of data and information, how systems should be organized, um, infrastructures, and also policy making. And you don't necessarily need to possess a technical background. And the program is also more general in that it covers different aspects of technology. Now there are three concentrations to choose from. And some career opportunities include a chief information officer, um, data scientist, and information systems manager. And the program specific admission requirements is structured programming in a modern high level language. For the prerequisite course, as you can see, it's the same for the cybersecurity management program and our other master's programs to follow. This is another program where the prerequisites help to bridge the gap and a strong academic background in computing isn't necessarily needed. For the information technology program, this is the most pr practical program that we offer. It's designed to be more hands-on for practical knowledge. So if you are looking to shift careers and you want a more technical graduate degree, this is definitely the right one for you. It's for people who intend to work as computer programmers to advance technology. And the core courses are more technically, technically rigorous and also emphasize problem solving. These are the three concentrations that you can choose from. And these are also some of the career opportunities. So for the program specific admissions requirements and also the prerequisite course, again, this is another program with the MSIT 501 prerequisite along with the same program specific uh, admissions requirements as the information systems program which again means a technical background is not necessarily required. However, I do want to point out again that the curriculum is more rigorous and programming intensive than the information systems program.
and for our Master of Science in Technology and Organizational Leadership. This program focuses on applying organizational leadership to technology infrastructures and organizations. It's geared towards individuals who already have a technical background, but want more skills in and knowledge in organizational leadership. So if you are looking to increase your technical experience, this, is, uh, this would not be the best program to consider. You can kind of think of this program as the uh, new age of an MBA combined with uh, technology. And it's also a collaborative degree. So you can, uh, the courses that are in there are from three different colleges, uh, from the College of uh, Computing Engineering, which is us, um, the College of Education, uh, and the uh, College of Business and Entrepreneurship. And so it's a very unique interdisciplinary approach to theory, practice, and real world of applications. And a few sample career paths, as you can see, are here project manager, IT manager, project coordinator, the program specific admissions requirements. And the prerequisite course. Also, again, the MSIT 501. So that concludes the portion of our master's degree programs. And now I'll go over our doctoral programs. So for our doctoral programs, we have three PhD programs at the CCE. Our PhD programs are very competitive, and it is expected that you meet the degree requirements, you have professional experience, and a strong research potential in the field. Our admission process does take both of your professional and academic accomplishments into consideration as well. Now, before I dive into the specifics of each of these programs, I want to share some overview information about the doctoral programs. So for the PhD in computer science, uh, there are two pathways and you can apply to the PhD program with either a master's or a bachelor's degree. And I'll go into more details on that um, shortly. The program format is delivered as a blend of on campus and online courses and activities. And the on-campus sessions are held at the Fort Lauderdale Davie campus. Students can also choose online course options as well. So it's very convenient for that. The PhD in cybersecurity management and information systems. So for these two, you must have at least a master's degree and the program format involves on-campus mandatory face-to-face -face meetings that are held on the Fort Lauderdale Davie campus, which is the main campus, by the way. And it's once per term from Wednesday to Friday. Um, in between these sessions, students work on course assignments, research, and participate in online activities involving um, interaction with faculty and other students. I do want to note here that our doctoral programs are not suited for international students who will need an I-22 study in the U.S. as the primary delivery of these programs is online. So for the PhD in computer science, this program is designed for the research-oriented professional with a master's degree in computer science or closely related field. It provides students with uh, tools and the ability to develop creative solutions to substantive real world problems. Now there are program specific admission requirements for each of our doctoral programs, uh, but we do not offer prerequisites to fill in the gaps like we do at the master's level. So it is expected that you hold a relevant master's or bachelor's degree and have the background experience um, such as programming languages, operating systems, theory of computation, and our computer architecture, um, just to name a few. And for the curriculum breakdown, as I mentioned earlier, there are two pathways for the PhD in computer science. 
So for the MS to PhD pathway, it's a minimum or total minimum of 51 credits. And what you would do is start off by taking five core courses at three credits each. And then for the BS to the PhD pathway, it's a total minimum of 66 credits. And you would take five core courses and five electives. And now both for both pathways, once a student is done with the coursework, coursework, they would move on to take at least three terms of the doctoral research course or four credits each. And then they would also move on to taking a three terms or three, three registrations of the dissertation course. For students who do not complete the dissertation course, uh, they would move on to continuing dissertation until it is complete. Um, this is nothing to be alarmed about. It's very common and on average students take about two to three years to complete the dissertation section for all of our doctoral programs. For the PhD in cybersecurity management, this program is to design to prepare graduates for positions in the industries of academia, federal, state, and you know, local government agencies and businesses. Um, the curriculum involves security courses that are both technically intensive and also management focused for a comprehensive approach. The uh, program specific admissions requirements include holding a relevant master's degree, having the professional experience in information security, and showing evidence of possessing a strong research potential related to information security. And here is the breakdown. So there is a total program minimum of 67 credits. There are seven core courses. You would take two courses, uh, two doctoral research courses. And once the research topic paper is approved, then you would move on to the doctoral dissertation course, which is a minimum of three terms or 24 credits. So this is kind of how you get to the 67 credits. Again, if you don't finish within the 24 credits, you would move on to continuing dissertation until it's completed. For the information systems program, this one is geared towards individuals that are interested in working in areas such as information systems planning, project management, and information science, dealing more with the operational side of systems. And the program specific admission requirements include holding a relevant master's degree and having background experience such as information systems, programming languages, systems analysis and design, and statistics. And this is the breakdown, which is very similar to, you know, um, the cybersecurity management program. So it's a, again, it's a minimum of 67 credits. There are seven core courses. You would do two research courses and then also three dissertation courses. And again, you would move on to continuing dissertation if you don't complete the 24 credits of the dissertation. And again, this is very common and nothing to be alarmed about. So we've reached the end of the presentation. Um, I really hope it was helpful for you. And thank you all again for joining our academic program guidance uh, webinar today. This presentation will be available on CCE's YouTube channel for future reference. And as we go into our q and I just wanna put it out there that if you have any specific questions about our programs with respect to your personal academic goals, and you wanna discuss it in more detail, please feel free to book an appointment with us. We highly encourage you to book these personal sessions, especially if you want that you know, one-on-one -on -one attention. And the link to book an appointment is on this screen here. And I'm also gonna go ahead and put it in the chat as well.